Hello, this is Teresa, and I'm back with another video tutorial for Dare to Be Artsy. I'm happy to be sharing this fun circus theme card with you, and I have a lots of tips and tricks to share throughout the video. And if you happen to be new here, please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already. So here is the stamp set I will be using today. It's called Rewrite the Stars, and it is a new release from Dare to Be Artsy. And I'm going to be using a few different stamps out of this set to create the card today, including this little, I'm going to call it a line of star stamp. And the first thing I need to do is set it up in my Misty because I intend to stamp several rows of this stamp in two different colors. And I'm starting with a piece of five and a half by four and a quarter inch Nina Silver White Paper. And now I'm aligning the stamp with all the stars at the very top. So I'm just making sure it's parallel to the top of the paper. And sometimes you may notice when you are working with a stamp, especially these cling stamps, they tend to stick to your fingers at times. So one of the tips I have to share with you today is a powder, anti-static powder tool can help a lot with helping to nudge and position a stamp like you see me doing here. Sometimes you may even need it to unstick the stamp from your fingers. Of course, as I say that, this is the one time that isn't going to work, but trust me, most of the time it does make a big difference. So now when I'm satisfied that this is perfectly aligned, I will close the door of the Misty and pick up that stamp and I'm ready to start stamping. Oh, I'm going to be stamping five rows of two different colors, a red ink and then a blue ink. So I'm starting with the pomegranate Dare to be Artsy ink and inking up the stamp, stamping it, and then I'm going to share how I got the rows perfectly or pretty evenly aligned anyway. There's a grid, there's grid marks on the paper on the Misty. And I'm going to move this up by one of those blocks, which happens to be one quarter of an inch. And this makes it easy and uniform as far as when I stamp the following lines. So I will keep moving up my piece of paper a quarter inch or one block at a time and re-stamp. And I do this a couple more times and I'm finished with my row of red stamps. And now I'm switching to a blue ink to stamp the next five rows of stars. And after that, I will get to a point where my paper will eventually reach the top edge of the Misty. And I'm at that point right now. So I'm going to have to be really careful about the next uh, row because it's a little tricky whenever you make that transition. So I was checking a few times to make sure I didn't have to make any minor adjustments and then I went ahead and stamped the next row of stars. And I also paid close attention to where the edge of that paper was aligned to my Misty because I did have to adjust. Every time I did move the paper another quarter of an inch I had to make sure that it was in the same place as the last uh, row I'd stamped before it if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Anyway, I'm just making sure that I'm adjusting by a quarter of an inch each time and how that corresponds with where the paper meets the grid is the thing to pay close attention to. Now I'm going, I've already stamped the final rows of stamps. I did add another row at the very bottom. And the reason for this is it was a design decision and if I had not stamped that bottom row, then it would have looked a little bit odd when I put the card together. And now I'm going to do some ink blending over that panel using Distress Oxide Walnut Stain. And I'm going to be doing very quick blending because I'm not trying to get the color perfectly uniform. In fact, that's part of the charm and nostalgia is by not having it be uniform. And now that I have that finished, I'm putting it against the card base that I will be using. And there is a gap on the side, which is something I'm going to address uh, by cutting this in panel into three different pieces. You could use a Fisker's trimmer because it has a guide wire and you can precisely align it to cut as many rows out as you want. I just bought this new cutter pillar trimmer and I wanted to try it out. It has a special uh, feature which is a light 
and it can help you with your alignment when you want to cut something. So I think that is a really cool feature. In fact, I'll try to show you a quick uh, freeze frame in just a moment, which is coming up. You see the light there, but when I turn that way, you see how I can align it perfectly where I want it to cut. And so I will cut this twice. I'm going to cut off one vertical column of the stars, and then I will cut another one with three row, three vertical rows of the stars. And then I'm going to create my first layer of the card for the card using those three pieces. Now I did say I would be sharing tips throughout this video and here is one of them. I am going to be aligning this piece using my grid mat so that I, the total width between the three pieces is not over four inches wide. So I'm just fussing with it until I get it just so. And once I do, then I'm going to use this post-it adhesive labeling tape. Although you could use a post-it note or anything that you have that could serve this trick. It just needs to be removable and not uh, something that would damage the stamping that you've already done. So I'm using two pieces of this tape to hold this exactly where I need it. So it makes it easier when I'm going to glue on uh, the next piece. And I'm taking a strip of paper here and I am ink blending with the pomegranate ink that I used earlier in covering this entire panel. Then I'm going to use the walnut stain distress oxide ink that I used earlier so that the color value looks more similar to the background that's already been done. And now I'm adding some glue onto the strips out there at the edge and then I'll add another line of glue just on the that inside edge there. And then I'll put that little one and a half inch wide strip there to make a background that you can see through the stripes. Uh, I'm sorry, see through the pieces of the panel that I cut earlier. So when I pull back the tape, now you can see what I've done. And next I'm going to stamp uh, the little square. You can see the sample up in the corner that I'd practiced with earlier. So I'm just setting this up so you can see this in process. The tricky part was getting that couple to line up with the word U. I happen to notice that it looked like it would align perfectly with both the Y and the U. And now that I've already stamped uh, the sentiment, I'm using a creative corner so that I can kind of get that out of the corner of the Misty because that's really, it otherwise would be really close. So I've now checked the alignment. It looks like it's going to work. So I'm stamping the couple and there were some places that looked like they weren't stamped clearly. So I'm taking advantage of the Misty's ability to stamp in exactly the same place. And now I have that stamped exactly how I envisioned it. So now I'm taking a couple of the smaller stamps that are in the set. One of them is kind of a collection of a bunch of little stars. So I will stamp that on here twice. And then there is another star in this very same set. And it's larger. And I'm going to stamp that right in the middle of those two little sprays of stars, so to speak. And now I'm using the ink pad to add some color to the edges of this square die cut. I'm also going to be using the same Distress Oxide ink I've been using throughout the video to blend ink over this die cut just to keep it looking just like the rest of the project. And I have another piece of white cardstock that I've already put some of the walnut stain ink on and I'm stamping out five of the red, five of the stars in red ink and then I'll stamp them five more times in blue ink. The reason I'm doing this is I'm planning to use a heart die that I had in my stash to cut around all these stars so I could use them for embellishments on the finished card. And as you can see, I laid out all the different elements in the place I intend to glue them later. And I took a picture of the format so I'd remember how I had done this for reference later. 
Now, I decided that the stars in the card needed a few more touches to make it a little more interesting. So I'm, use, I'm going to be using some rhinestones, but before I adhere them to the stars, I'm going to use a Copic marker, and I happen to use Y28, so that those rhinestones aren't quite so bright because they're just some three millimeter clear rhinestones. So I'm using that same post-it tape that I used earlier and I cut uh, I cut one piece in two pieces so the sticky side of one of that piece in the middle is up and I can make those little rhinestones stick to this temporarily so that I can then pick up the Copic marker and color it and kind of dull down the brightness a little bit. And off camera, I applied all these little sequins to the middle of each of the stars. Now I'm taking some hemp twine and the only color that would have worked in this was actually pretty stark white. So I'm using the same Distress Oxide ink to color it to make it coordinate better with the project. And I'm wrapping the twine around this card panel three times and just using some scotch tape to adhere it. I've already popped up this panel with double-sided foam adhesive tape and the same thing with this square die cut which I'm going to put there at an angle and I was trying to decide whether or not to put it above or below the string and then or the twine and then I decided to use one of those little stars and all of them happen to be on pop dots by the way. I decided to use that to kind of push down that string as you see and then I'm referring back to my picture so that I can place all of the other stars on the card to complete the project. I really appreciate you spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, I dare you to get artsy.